All right, let's make Wednesday in Enid's Snood. I'm Jess from Butt First Crochet. Let's get started. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to make my version of Wednesday and Enid's um, Snood from the cool Netflix series Wednesday. So I did Wednesday Snood. It's in black. So of course you could do this in any black um, colored yarn. But for Enid's, I am going to give it a go with this Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and the color is Jazzy Fuchsia. I think I'm going to need two skeins of this, which is what I've gone ahead and got, but we'll see once I'm finished. I'll update this if you need more than two, but two of these. And mainly we're going to be crocheting with a size nine millimeter crochet hook. But for my initial foundation um, starting chain and my first row, I'm going to go up a hook size just so things kind of don't buckle up because I crochet on the tighter side. You'll need some scissors, a couple stitch markers, a needle to weave in your ends, and a tape measure. And your copy, of course. If you hear giggles and puppies in the background, I apologize. That actually, I don't apologize. That's my life. I have four kids and a dog. No other time to get this done. But we love Wednesday and we are going to make Enid's snood. So you can either pull from two skeins to double up the thread because I'm going to make this into a bulky weight by holding two strands together. So you can pull from two skeins. You can cake the skeins into two separate ones or you can pull from each end, which is what I think I'm going to do first. So I'm going to take off this label and here is one end and then find the other end and just kind of unwind that as you go and kind of pull them together. So let's try it that way. I'm going to start out with a bit of a tail, maybe six inches or so. Make a slip knot. Grab your larger hook. If you don't have a larger hook, then just make sure you make this foundation chain very loose. And that way everything ends up even. So let's start out by chaining 103. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And again, make sure this is loose and that you're holding two strands together. Next, we're going to double crochet all the way across, starting with the third chain from the hook. So here's our chain on the hook. There's chain one. two and three. So our first stitch is going to go in here. Turn the yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first double crochet. Do that again in each chain until you get to the end. So yarn over, Insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two. Again, yarn over, one 
one more time slowly. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two. That's a double crochet and you're gonna continue that down the rest of the chain and I'll meet you there. All right, I finished my first row, which is 100 stitches. And you can make this longer or shorter if you want to. The number of stitches really doesn't matter. But my initial chain here, my first row, I should say, is... measuring about 55 inches. So you can make yours longer or shorter, but I am around 55 inches for my gauge. So you can size up or size down, add some chains if you want to. The stitch count really does not matter for this pattern. So next we are going to join this into a loop. So how I do that is hold this in one hand and then just find the other end. Kind of pull like this so you not to twist your chain. So here's my other end. And I'm going to join to the first stitch, not the chain, not the starting um, chain two, but the first chain. And just join that with a slip stitch. So now you've got a big loop. And that tail we left at the beginning is going to be used to stitch up this gap right here. So you can do that now or you can do that later, but you'll just want to put in maybe two or three stitches to close up that gap. And you're going to switch hooks. So I'm going to put down my 10 millimeter and pick up my nine millimeter crochet hook. And I find it super helpful to mark the first and last stitch. So you know what to crochet into because slip stitches can really mess you up when you're turning your work because we are going to be turning our work in this. So I know this is my slip stitch. So this is my last stitch. So I'm marking my stitch here. There's my slip stitch. And I know this is my first stitch of the next round, but we're actually going to chain one and turn. So I wanna mark that stitch. So now you're going to chain one. So I did my chain one and turn. Chase, be quiet. My dog's going to bark. Our first stitch is going to go in the mark stitch, which is going to be a half double crochet into that marked stitch. And then we're going to do an offset double crochet for the rest of the round, which is placing double crochets between each of the posts. So yarn over, insert your hook in between the next two posts. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. But when in the roll with a knife, she tapped Tyler's shoulder. I thought that was Dave. I seriously thought that was Dave. <laughs> you know how they made things? You know how they actually like had them there? They took an actual person's hand and then just photo shooted the rest? Not, they, some of them were like, so like this is their hand and then they put like a rubber hand that make it look like thing and what it looked like. 
because like their wrist is right here, but his wrist is up here. So a real person actually wore a full blue screen suit. Green screen? Is it green screen or blue, blue screen? screen? What? And then they had to like hide their head and they were like, pretty much. So yeah, it was just an actual person. Like, they it's funny if you look at the, um, the guy in the blue suit, like he's like there, like a person. Wait a minute. But you only see the hand. But if when the part when Finn got stabbed, did they just use the rubber silicone? Like, did they just use the rubber part? Still, the the thing is, his dad is not Tyler's master, and they're only loyal to their master. So you also have to think about the fact that. But he hadn't tried to act before though. I guess you have a point. Have you seen the bloopers? No. Did you you should have saw one of them when when they were escaping the house when the monster came downstairs to come after them. Yeah. Remember when they like jumped out the window? Yeah. When she threw out the flashlight. And one of the bloopers, she threw the flashlight directly at Enid's forehead. <laughs> And she's like, oh, it's okay. Like, just, because they were running away from a pretty much a fake monster. Yeah. Like, it was someone I saw, because in the final fight, when the wolf kind of bite the monster, they had... me eat it. Yeah. They had, um... So they... The, that's only how I know... Sorry. The only, that's the only way I know. They have a person in a gray suit on, like, pretty much, like, on springs acting as the monster. Yeah, but okay, seriously, for the wolf part, like at the very end. I didn't see the full fight, I saw like when she wolfed out. Like the entire fight, I feel like that was just straight up CGI. It was, people actually acted it out, but they changed how they look. Yeah, but the fact that Enid, like, I have never seen a, a teenager or just anyone literally jump sideways and do a donkey kick. I know, I didn't see that. I told you I didn't watch most of the episode eight. Okay, yeah, I get that. Also, in, at the end of episode eight, or just in the midst of every single episode, is that real blood or were they, or were they actually I know, I know one of them at, um, it's, most of the blood on their faces is makeup, but uh, at the um, dance, they used red paint. She literally stated that. <laughs> she stated it was red paint, but Wednesday, okay. Well, While that is makeup, I know. But um, the funny thing, um, when she did the interview to get on the show, she just finished filming, um, an episode from, uh, or a movie from, uh, where, like, um, it said, where she got, like, a gunshot to the head, so she still had all the makeup on, so, during the interview, when they first met her, she said to walk in, she had all the makeup on to look, make it look like, from what she previously filmed. The movie was called X. Wait a minute. I know that movie. I haven't watched it, but I've seen it before. Yeah. Okay, did you know that Jenna Ortega actually has her own novel published? She, um, she played, have you seen the movie yesterday yet on Netflix? She played the older sister. I just noticed that the other day. The only thing about yesterday is that everything, every single thing that I would want to do that was on there, my parents would say no to. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I'm nearing the end of my round. And I'm going to place my last double crochet between these posts. Then my last stitch will go in this marked space here, this marked stitch, and that is going to be a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert through the stitch, 
pull up the loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. And that's your last stitch of this round, and you're going to mark that stitch. Then going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. And now mark that stitch as well. Chain one. Move your yarn out of the way so you don't get a tangle and turn. Now we're going to, yeah, so we're working this way. We're going to turn and now we're going to go back this way. So this is your chain one. There's your slip stitch. First stitch is going to go in here, which is that half double crochet stitch again. Mark your stitch. Then you're going to do your offset double crochets all the way around till you get to the last stitch. And in that last stitch, you're again going to do a half double crochet. And we're just going to repeat this sequence till we get the width that we want. I just finished off 15 rows. And that makes the width of the snood about 10 inches this way. And I just fastened off here. And then I need to stitch this bottom section closed. But I just wanted to show you the reason why I did a chain one in turn was for the seam. You can't really see it. It blends in really well. Chaining one and turning makes the seam look very straight. If you don't like doing the chain one and turn, you could always do a continuous round like I started with this black one. But you can see the seam and it kind of slants up. So all of your work is going to tilt a little bit. Both look perfectly acceptable. It's kind of your own personal preference. But... Um, for the written pattern, it is going to have the directions for the chain one and turn to have that nice clean seam. So I'm just going to grab my yarn needle and close this up at the bottom. Just a couple stitches here to close this up. All right, I just finished weaving in my ends. So now it is gonna be tassel time. This used one whole skein of the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the color Jazzy and just this is what's left of my second skein which is quite a bit so you could probably get away with just one if you didn't want it to be quite as wide but um of course I'm going to use the extra now to make a tassel a couple tassels it's really hard to see where exactly the tassels are on the snood. So I'm just gonna space them out evenly um, in one third chunks. So I measured it out and it's about a little more than 18 inches apart. So let's get started making our first tassel. To make the tassel, you're gonna need a sharp 
pair of scissors, probably something a little bit heftier than say your yarn scissors. A book, I just found this notebook, but any book or something that you can wind and wrap around here is good. Then of course your yarn and your needle. So I'm going to take my yarn and hold it here and just start wrapping. And of course, the more wraps you make, the thicker your tassel will be. But just looking at Enid's snood, it doesn't look like the tassels are very thick. I forgot to count. <laughs> I think this is about 10 that I've done so far. All right, 20 seems like a good even number. We're gonna go with it here. So, we'll snip off the bottom, and you want to carefully slide this off of your notebook, or your book, or whatever you're using, and set that aside. I'm going to take a length of yarn, maybe about a foot or so. and put that through. And this is gonna be for attaching it to the snood. I really like the word snood. It's fun, huh? Tie this. I'm gonna just do a double knot, like so. Then you can take, kind of pull it, and you're going to snip this part here. So get your scissors in there and just snip that. There we go. Then you're going to take another length of yarn, about a foot or so. Snip. Then come down about an inch or so from the top. And then I'm going to keep one side a little longer than the other because I'm going to wrap it around a few times. So I've got this end is a bit shorter than this end. Tie a pretty tight knot. And a double knot here. And maybe one more. I have triplets, so I seem to do things in three. So there's your triple knot. And I'm just going to let that piece hang down a bit and then the longer one I'm just going to wrap around a couple of times just to cover my knot and make the wrap look a little more pronounced. Speaking of triplets, someone's not a happy camper downstairs. And once you have that as thick as you like, thread your needle. Just kind of go down and out there. 
Then you want to trim this so it's even and the length that you want it. So I'm just going to give it a little haircut here. There's your tassel. So go ahead and make three of those and then we will attach them. All right, so I've got my three tassels that I'm going to attach to our snood here. I'm just gonna attach this to my needle or thread my needle, I should say. I'm just going to come in any space, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to weave this in here to make sure it's attached. Oops, I snagged that, that it's attached pretty securely. down through here I'm just going to come back up and like around then I'm just going to kind of get in between here and make a knot make sure that's nice and tight and then just go back through the center and let this fall out of the bottom you can clean that up a little bit with your scissors if you need to measuring tape and I want to measure about 18 inches away from this tassel which is about here and then do the same thing attach this one and then in another 18 inches, attach your third. I want to not thank you for watching and please don't like it and please don't subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Just kidding. Like it and subscribe.